At this point in the series, we have humans deciding to leave the state of nature and form a society in order to provide security, establish justice, and provide for the general welfare. You may recall a few times where I've described these functions as the purpose of government, and in today's lesson, we will uncover why that is. I'm Pragmatic Penguin. Let's get to it. If we think of society as a place where people exist together, then it is an environment in which different forces are at play. The three most basic forces at play in any society are going to be people, markets, and government. The first of these forces, people, are going to primarily influence a society through their culture, and they are ultimately who society is for. These people may be peaceful or violent, just or not, and hoard resources or equitably distribute them. Some may protest the common behaviors in their culture, but culture changes at a glacial pace and thus cannot reliably address the problems of society at any given time by itself. The second of these forces is markets. Markets are created whenever individuals exchange goods and leverage comparative advantages. Merchants will arise as a result of markets in order to facilitate this exchange in the most efficient way possible. They are going to improve the general welfare through this process but they do this for efficiency, and most market organizations are profit-seeking and do not have societal stability in mind when making decisions. The last of these forces is the one we, as humans, must create to ensure a society that adheres to the first principles of security, justice, and general welfare. The government, no matter its form, is established for the purpose of maintaining a well-ordered society since neither of the other two forces are naturally inclined to do so. This is a function that comes at a cost of resources and some personal sovereignty, which humans are nationally resistant to. So the organization must accomplish these functions in the least invasive way possible. All three of these forces are interdependent in that they influence each other to varying degrees. For example, people influence markets by demanding goods and they influence government either directly in democratic nations or indirectly in autocratic ones. Markets determine availability and distribution of goods which people and governments will purchase. Governments will be responsible for maintaining systems which disincentivize antisocial behaviors and reward social ones in both markets and people. Social behaviors here being defined as acts that are in keeping with our first principles of society. Government provides security primarily through policing and military efforts. People could do this, but in a society free of government, this would likely lead to a state of nature scenario, since social behavior will be inconsistently rewarded or punished based on the multitude of interpretations. A monopoly on the legitimate use of force is vitally important to this endeavor. Markets could also provide security as well, but their efforts at policing are wrought with conflicts of interest since the employers of such a police force would be profit motivated and not solely societally driven. While it is rational that a corporation should want a stable society, since these are optimal market conditions, their goal and skills are not well suited for such a purpose. This is why government must take on the role of security, so that it can be applied consistently and for the sole purpose of protecting society. For the case of justice, governments are charged with establishing a just system for similar reasons. Individuals will not reward or punish behaviors consistently, and markets will reward profit-seeking behaviors rather than social ones. Not only are these goals not well aligned with social behavior, sometimes they will lead markets or individuals who engage in anti-social behavior. Governments, being created specifically to encourage social behavior, are the only entity in society capable of effectively doing so. Humans are self-interested, and so will strive to improve their own fortunes. Markets will, once again, seek to maximize efficiency. These behaviors can improve the general welfare, but they can also lead to destructive behaviors without a mediating force. This is the most controversial of the functions of government and where the vast majority of public policy debate exists. Nevertheless, without it, societies would never approach their non-zero potential. A simple example of this is the function of taxation for building roads. This is a cost put on humans and markets which enhances their ability to cooperate, but which neither would necessarily be able to create with any amount of consistency. This may take the form of humans existing in areas with high market activity having roads while the more isolated humans would not, despite that they arguably need them more to participate in markets. Roads then create a market for corporations to make various vehicles to take advantage of them, and people can then purchase the vehicles and will have greater accessibility to markets in which they participate in. The tax, if spread to both groups fairly, costs far less than the value of the benefits received, which is one way that government can improve the general welfare. 
Taking our example a step further, the introduction of vehicles by the market creates a new hazard to society, since vehicles can be very dangerous for individuals. People may exacerbate this problem by seeking to get places even faster, creating a demand signal to markets and giving pedestrians less time to react to their presence. Government, in its role to promote the general welfare, would then put some regulation on vehicle manufacturing and human driving to mitigate this issue. Some of these rules might look like stop signs, sidewalks, and speed limits, and some of their enforcements might be through fines or jail time. These measures have a cost of limiting the freedom to speed for an individual, but they also increase the freedom from these hazards in the process. Since security is a first principle, whereas murdering through negligence is not, this would rate as a good public policy if it were to accomplish the promised end state. In this video, we took our first principles and defined how government was necessary to apply them to society by introducing people and markets as societal forces. We then looked at how these principles cannot be upheld by these other forces and result in the formulation of government. This is an event that has happened in every single society, but at this point, I believe we have reached the point of understanding why. Coming up next in the Building Depth series, we will now begin to look at some of the issues of governance and how to use our foundational knowledge. If you've made it to the end of this video, I just wanted to say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like and comment your thoughts down below, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you never miss out on more content just like this.